me to one one business that has ever pandered to SJWs that succeeded. Point me to one. Point me to one movie that has ever pandered to SJWs and succeeded. You can't because it does not exist. Pander to the people that sit in a tent in a movie theater overnight just to talk about their favorite Star Wars stories and characters. Pander to those people. Do not pander to social justice. We need to get her political ideology and propaganda out of Star Wars. Make Star Wars great again. Fire Kathleen Kennedy. Fire her three months ago. The sooner you get this disease out of Lucasfilm. In business perspective, there's so much hate for her. It just makes sense for a changing of the guard. At Disney, you've created this wham and respect uh, mentality. And if you fire a strong, powerful woman that's made that's had three movies that's all crossed a billion dollars, even though she had literally nothing to do with any of that in terms of the success, all she's had to do is with the social engineering that's been forced into it. So I don't think I will ever get over how badly nerds of sci-fi can't actually understand political and economic themes of sci-fi. So today, from the title you will see, we are talking about the toxic politics of the online Star Wars community. And I've actually made a video talking about the politics of Star Wars before, about six, seven, eight months ago, I don't really remember. Basically talking about how Star Wars has always been a left-wing franchise and it hasn't suddenly gone woke. I'd actually argue the reverse. But these guys make their whole channel about this mythical conspiracy about Star Wars being taken from the fans, being undermined by SJW identity politics, which come from people like Kathleen Kennedy, this boogeyman of the online Star Wars community, even though there is very little evidence for any things they claim. They often read articles from websites which are essentially just like their YouTube channels, making these clickbait outrage articles. And they use it as a source and act like it's legit. They talk about, you know, secret conversations and leaks which are never verified, have no basis in reality to push their agenda. So what we're going to do today is go through the various conspiracy theories and talk about them and talk about the outrage and how ridiculous it is and talk about how they have to create a fictional narrative to suit their own political agendas which are often very far right leaning or right leaning. Most of these people are white American Republicans and they like to pitch all these people against each other and put their own politics on certain people. So you have Gina Carano, who's right wing versus Pedro Pascal, who's left wing. You have Kathleen Kennedy, who's supposedly left wing versus John Favreau and Dave Filoni, who supposedly don't care about politics. And it's all very ridiculous and makes the online Star Wars community completely embarrassing. But before we go any further, edgier content on my channel is always demonetized. So if you want to support me monetarily, please check out my Patreon. Thanks so much to everyone who has already done this. At the moment, the benefits are gaining access to the private Discord server, and you obviously have your name featured at the end of every video and in the description. I'm working for some other benefits that will come in the future. If you want to join our growing community, please check out the Discord and the subreddit in the description. And if you want to follow me personally, check out at the Cavernacle on Instagram and Twitter. And also you slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit. So with that out the way, let's get into the video. And also for every 5k, we get a new chocolate orange. I'm on 23 now. Let's try and get 25 so I can add a new one to the pile. But to start with, I want to talk about my own experience of Star Wars and then the politics of Star Wars. I made a video on the politics, but you guys can check that out for a longer form discussion on that. But my own experience of Star Wars, like most people my age, 25 or older, we grew up with the prequels. We'd saw the original trilogy before, but yes, lots of us like the prequels, despite many people saying they're badly written, badly acted. I like them. They're probably some of my favorite Star Wars movies, especially Revenge of the Sith. Played loads of the games growing up. I followed the Clone Wars and Rebels as they were coming out. I really liked those shows a lot. Obviously made by people like Dave Filoni, but most people don't realize that George Lucas was heavily, heavily involved in nearly every single episode of the original run of the Clone Wars. So it's very much his own brainchild. Now in terms of Disney Star Wars, I don't think the original trilogy is anything special. I think episode 7 is fine, Last Jedi is okay, and I think episode 9 is just hot garbage. It's one of the worst movies I've ever watched. It's nonsensical as a film and as a narrative. It makes no sense. It's like the online YouTube community and prequel memes got together 
to take over J.J. Abrams' mind to make this complete dumpster fire of a movie. I think it's literally awful. I've seen it once and I never want to see it again. I knew within 10 minutes it's going to be awful. That hyperspace jumping sequence at the start was so chaotic and fast. I was like, what the hell is going on? Honestly, awful movie. And I don't buy into conspiracy theories about Kathleen Kennedy making these films like rubbish. I think J.J. Abrams made them bad, starting with episode 7, by making a film that was basically a remake of a lot of the concepts from the original trilogy. And then why nine is so bad? Because you had Ryan Johnson do eight. Then J.J. Abrams basically acts like that movie didn't exist to the massive detriment of the ninth film, which feels like two films crowned into one, and it just makes it completely unwatchable and awful. Like, Ray being a Palpatine is one of the dumbest things I've ever seen in film. There is no setup for it. And it's such an awful payoff. So nearly everything in that film was bad. Bring Back the Emperor was bad. All this fan service was awful. But funnily enough, a lot of the online YouTube community actually like this movie, which I can't get my head around. But I think it says a lot about how ridiculous they are and how they don't actually understand film or narrative. But now let's move into the politics of sci-fi and Star Wars. Here is a clip for you of James Cameron and George Lucas, two of the fathers of modern sci-fi, talking about how Star Wars, the original one, is basically inspired by the Viet Cong and NLF struggle against the Americans. Notice how George Lucas calls America an empire. You did something very interesting with Star Wars, if you think about it. The good guys are the rebels. They're using asymmetric warfare against a highly organized empire. I think we call those guys terrorists today. We call them Mujahideen, we call them Al-Qaeda. When I did it, they were Viet Cong. Exactly. So were you thinking of that at the time? Yes. So it was a very anti-authoritarian, very kind of 60s, against the man kind of thing, yeah. nested or, deep inside a, or, a, a fantasy. Or a colonial, you know, we're fighting the largest empire in the world. Right. And we're just a bunch of hayseeds in coonskin hats that don't right. know nothing. That's right. And it was the same thing with the Vietnamese. Yep. The irony of that one is in... In both of those, the little the little guys won. Right. And the big, highly technical em- the, empire. The English Empire. Right? English the English Empire, empire, the American Empire, yeah. lost. Yeah. That was the whole point. But that's a classic us not profiting from the lesson of history. You look at the situation now where America is so proud of being the biggest economy, the most powerful military force on the planet, it's become the empire in the, from the perspective well, of a lot of people around the world. It was the empire during the Vietnam War. And, but we never learned, you know, from England or Rome or, you know, a dozen other empire, empires that fall. went on for hundreds of years or yeah. sometimes thousands of years. We never got it. We never said, well, wait, 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 wait. This isn't the right thing to do. So to all the anti-SJW reactionary Star Wars YouTubers, does that not sound pretty woke to you? Making the Rebels the good guys in an American film starring American actors inspired by the Viet Cong who fought against America and in George Lucas' own words and James Cameron's own words, America is an empire and it was back then as well. George Lucas was also slated to direct Apocalypse Now. So do you think this guy didn't have pretty left-wing politics? He did, and Star Wars is his brainchild. He talks later about the prequels being influenced by people like Richard Nixon and George Bush and everything that was going on during the time the prequels are being made. Star Wars has always been political and it's always been extremely left-leaning and has been anti-authoritarian, But if you watch The Clone Wars and Rebels to a lesser extent, it's clear it also has a pretty anti-capitalist, corporatist message as well. George Lucas was involved in The Clone Wars, which explores way more political issues. Now, I'm not saying the prequels are perfect because it has really problematic depictions, you know, people like Watto and stuff, essentially being stereotypes of different ethnic groups. But by and large, the politics are left-leaning. And the politics of the Aliens movies, the politics of Blade Runner... These are all anti-capitalist left-leaning films as well. Most sci-fi, good sci-fi and modern sci-fi is about capitalist dystopias. I don't even understand how you can like things like Blade Runner, like a lot of right-wingers do, and completely miss the politics and how it's showing a world which has been destroyed by right-wing politics. Anyway, that's just to lay the foundations as we go into it more. So think about how ridiculous all these takes are when you have people saying they hate identity politics, they hate SJW politics, they hate left-leaning politics, 
in the context of the sequel films that I would argue don't really say much about politics. And they say they love George Lucas. They love the original films. We're fans of the original films where the good guys are inspired by America's enemies. So these guys have a huge conspiracy theory about Kathleen Kennedy, who took over the Star Wars franchise from George Lucas. She is, of course, a massive collaborator with people like Lucas and Spielberg, working on the Indiana Jones franchise with the pair of them. She's obviously very good friends of them. She obviously loves this stuff and loves Star Wars. But because she's a woman, she's been targeted. Now, the sequel trilogy is bad. I'm not even going to argue that it's not. I don't think it's down to her. Again, I think it's down to people like J.J. Abrams who completely butchered a compelling storyline by basically remaking and just taking elements from all the original trilogy while ignoring things like the prequels like fans of my generation actually like. So it's one of the most transparent grifts on Star Wars YouTube where they will make so many videos about Kathleen Kennedy, about totally irrelevant stuff, but the through line is, right, she's close to getting fired. She's been close to getting fired, according to these guys, for about the past four years. Now, she's not going to get fired because Star Wars is very profitable. The movies did well financially. Just because a lot of reactionary YouTubers didn't like it, they're not suddenly going to fire her. She's a very successful producer of movies. She's a very good leader for them if they're making this money. They don't want her out the door. There are so many conspiracy theories about this stuff. So here is a little montage of all these videos. These range from various years, various different Star Wars YouTubers. But they can't stop saying that she's going to be fired. I've got some pretty freaking amazing insider information for you about Star Wars. And a lot of you are going to be, well, you're going to be, I think, overall happy. Although a lot of this is quite disturbing. Top brass from not just Star Wars, but also Marvel and Pixar were also in on the call, but listening only. Likely at the request of Bob Iger, who wants their advice on how to fix this shit show. And yes, he does know it's a Shit show. Evidence? The word that he wants Kathleen Kennedy out. He actually does, but nobody will take her job. Several have been approached, but turned it down, including J.J. Abrams, who turned it down flat and didn't even hesitate. However, behind the scenes over at Lucasfilm, many changes have been made by creators like George Lucas and even the Disney CEO, Bob Chapek. Recently, Kathleen Kennedy was fired from a major Star Wars project that was going to be a new Star Wars TV series to be released in 2022. Now, it's noted that one of the big reasons as to why Kathleen Kennedy was fired from the Star Wars project had to do with Kennedy hiring the wrong type of creators behind George Lucas's and Bob Chapek's back without any approval. However, when Kathleen Kennedy was running one of the most important Star Wars projects within her, within her own universe at the time that she was planning, it's described that George Lucas had fired Kathleen Kennedy from such project that was said to involve actress Brie Larson, which at the time was considered Brie's second Star Wars project. Now, Kathleen Kennedy was ultimately fired by both George Lucas and Bob Chapek, the new Disney CEO, after attempting to, to actually drastically change the philosophy of Star Wars and trying to retcon the original trilogy movies through her new TV series for Disney Plus that was going to be set sometime before the events of episode one. Now, these guys often say that it is secret leaks, you know, phone calls, sources have told them, but they never back it up. They either use sources like the Daily Express, which is a really right-wing clickbait outlet from the UK, or like I said, use other websites which are made by people like them for clickbait. Now, recently, the conspiracy theories have re-emerged and that Kathleen Kennedy wants to fire Jon Favreau and Dave Filoni because they're doing such a good job with The Mandalorian and Disney+. Plus. It's described that Kathleen Kennedy behind the scenes wants to fire Jon Favreau for multiple reasons. Kathleen Kennedy has said the one to get rid of Jon Favreau since Favreau and Filoni are going to be regulating the last two phases of the High Republic era of Star Wars. She also tried to fire people like Gina Carano as well, and we'll get back to her a bit later. But it's just these pretty unhinged conspiracy theories that she is some sort of devil boogeyman who literally exists just to ruin Star Wars 
for the fun of it because she hates men. There's stuff being taken out of context where she says she's not going to back down on her decisions because a lot of white men are angry at the casting decisions for things like The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. I remember the outrage about John Boyega and Kelly Marie Tran and obviously Daisy Ridley as Rey and they're saying it's a Mary Sue series all about pushing feminist politics just because it has a strong female character. And these guys will say, oh, I like Ripley from Aliens, but Ripley essentially is just like a male character who's played by a female. Doesn't mean you're some sort of feminist for liking that one character from that one action movie. So these guys love to target women and they always do it. They did it recently with the Christina Ariel stuff. They did it with Kelly Marie Tran. These channels also have some weird crossover, the Brie Larson stuff, where they keep on talking about Brie Larson and Star Wars. I don't know why they're doing that at the moment. And I think it is driven by their attitude towards women because at the same time, John Favreau and Dave Filoni, although they haven't said explicitly political things, I watch a lot of the interviews with Dave Filoni from things like The Clone Wars. I'd be seriously surprised if he was right-leaning and didn't agree with most of Kathleen Kennedy's sentiment. Same with John Favreau. And these guys also simultaneously say she has no influence but has all the influence. They can't really decide if she is this, you know, Darth Sidious figure manipulating everything behind the scenes or she's like a Jar Jar Binks who's totally irrelevant. Now to show how pathetic these guys are, recently there was a big drama where a Lucasfilm employee, Pablo Hidalgo, seemingly, apparently made fun of Star Wars theory because he cried at seeing Luke in The Mandalorian. Now, Pablo didn't actually make fun of him. He was being sarcastic. Upon seeing a picture of Star Wars Fury crying, he tweeted, emotions are not for sharing. That's actually all he said. And it saw a movement of the Star Wars YouTubers to criticize Pablo, saying he hates the fans, he's helping people like Kathleen Kennedy undermine the franchise, and he was basically making fun of anyone who's passionate about Star Wars. But sure enough, no. He actually did chime in, along with the other tweets. He said emotions are not for sharing in response to that troll. This is a man who represents very high up in the Lucasfilm story group. It was beautiful to see, and so that was my reaction. And for you to belittle that, it's very unprofessional. It's very wrong. You should be better than this. You're very high up in uh, one of the biggest companies in the world and making some real cool stuff. Star Wars Fury even went on Geeks and Gamers to talk about this stuff and how angry he was at Pablo. So pretty much it was a complete mischaracterization of the tweet. And this guy, who has only 3 million subs on YouTube, spread it everywhere, even to the toxic far-right channels like Geeks and Gamers. So a nice little community you got there. If you're a kid or a teenager who watches Star Wars Theory, now you've been exposed to some absolute right-wing lunatic who's probably going to warp your political views because you're too naive to realise this guy is so toxic. Now, Pablo apologised, but the whole notion this guy just exists to make fun of Star Wars fans and criticise them, I know who he is because I used to watch this YouTube show called Rebels Recon where they'd talk about each episode of Star Wars Rebels. They would bring him a question every time. It was part of the show and they could be really, really specific, and he would know the answer to everything. Hey, Pablo. Hey, Andy. So I have a Rebels question for oh, you. Oh, wow, we haven't done that in a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Okay, Here sure. we go. Itis Varnas asks, In Rebel Assault, when Hera fires upon Scarus' TIE Defender, her S-foils are still locked instead of attack position. Are X-Wings still capable of firing with locked S-foils? Yeah, you can't actually fire with your wings shut down. Opening it up into attack position basically gives you a greater spread of fire, so it's more effective, but you can do both. All right, Pablo. Okay. <laughs> it's the finale, so I have two questions for you this week. All right, wait on me. All right, number one. Ishan Nigam asks, if a Jedi falls to the dark side, does that by default make them a Sith? A uh, Sith is actually something you have to study to become. You can only okay. become a Sith by learning from a Sith Lord. So if a Jedi falls to the dark side, they're just a Jedi who's fallen into the dark side. Being on the dark side doesn't automatically make you a Sith. So it's very much like how Jedi have to be trained to be Jedi. Exactly. It's a, it's a process you have to go through. Okay. Thanks, Paula. Mm -hmm. Moving on. Kalish Synth asks, what species is the new Inquisitor? The new one that we just saw in the finale, the eighth brother, is a Torellian Django Jumper, the same species as Cassie Cryar from the Clone Wars episode where Ahsoka loses her lightsaber. Awesome. Thanks for that, Pablo. It's his job to know everything about Star Wars because he has to make sure that different projects don't infringe on the canon and the timeline of other films. Do you honestly think this guy, whose whole life is to know about the entire canon of Star Wars, honestly thinks 
fans who cry at Luke being the Mandalorian are like pathetic and you shouldn't show your emotions. Do you honestly think that? A guy who knows everything about Star Wars thinks you shouldn't be passionate about Star Wars. Of course, if you even knew anything about him, you'd think it's kind of weird he's making fun of them. But then he obviously said in a statement to clarify, I wish to clarify that my post that emotions are not to be shared was sarcastic self-mockery and was certainly not intended to be hurtful to anyone. I am deeply sorry that it was. As a lifelong fan, I can appreciate fans expressing how they feel. It's what being a fan is about. Pretty standard reply, and it's insane this Star Wars theory guy is absolutely so sensitive. He would take such offense at this. He'd have to make multiple videos on it and go on other YouTube channels to talk about this stuff. Again, honestly, it's so pathetic. And of course, what happened? These pathetic, whiny, crybaby Star Wars fans jumped on this, start harassing Pablo loads, and he's part of the boogeymen of these people ruining Star Wars. Again, these guys start harassing anyone who they see as attacking the fans or trying to change something about Star Wars or making it more diverse or woke. So because these guys like narratives, a recent one is pitting Gina Carano versus Pedro Pascal, two of the stars of the Mandalorian. Now, Gina Carano is pretty clearly right wing. Pedro Pascal's parents were opposition to Pinochet and they were socialists. And I think Pedro Pascal is a socialist. I don't know if he's come out on Twitter and said it, but he seems in what he supports and everything to be very left leaning. So now people are saying that to be in Star Wars, you have to be really woke. Now, Gina Carano got in some trouble with the fans and fan base online, the left leaning fan base. And Desert reporting that the backlash to Gina Carano began in November 2020 when the Mandalorian fans called for Disney to fire the actress after she shared political beliefs and mocked face masks on social media. Carano tweeted a message about getting rid of fake votes and requiring identification at voting booths. And Carano later posted a meme that made fun of government leaders and face masks. When fans asked her to put pronouns in her bio, she put beep, bop, boop. So people also think she's a transphobe, mocking pronouns and everything. So of course... When you have stuff like that, when you have someone who's clearly right-wing mocking things like pronouns, which right-wing people hate, she is now the hero. She's the hero of these YouTubers, despite the fact she's not a particularly great actress. Her character is okay in The Mandalorian. And Pedro Pascal is the villain. But he's not as much of a villain as people like Kathleen Kennedy. He's not as much of a villain as anyone else, because I, I think he gets off a bit lightly because he's a man who stars as this cool character in The Mandalorian, a show people like while people like Kathleen Kennedy get the brunt of the criticism because they think everything that's bad in Star Wars is down to her now because she's trying to make it woke and make it, you know, for the SJWs. So there are other conspiracies now about this where Jon Favreau has recently saved her job because Kathleen Kennedy wanted to fire Gina Carano because she didn't have left-wing politics. That's a popular one going around at the moment. Another one is Pedro Pascal tried to get her fired. And just the concept of them firing her for these posts seems pretty ridiculous to me in the sense that they have this established character in The Mandalorian. And a lot of actors have different political beliefs and that's whatever. But I think her views go a bit further in the sense she's mocking like face masks and everything. So it is kind of damaging and dangerous. But again, there's no indication that she has lost her job but she's going to lose her job either. I just think... Because a lot of these Star Wars YouTubers have extremely toxic right-wing politics. When they saw her tweet about this sort of stuff, they just cast her as this character. Someone who says what they think and Disney really hates it and they want to fire her. But people like Jon Favreau, who are the good guys because they made Mandalorian and they don't infect Mandalorian with SJW politics, stand up to people like Kathleen Kennedy who want to take over and just make everything woke. So when you watch these videos and you watch these clips and you watch what I've shown you, it's kind of hard to discern, are these guys just real grifters or are these guys just really unhinged? And I think there's a mixture of both even on the individual level. Surely these guys must know that a lot of the theories they're pushing about people like Kathleen Kennedy, Pablo, Hidalgo and Pedro Pascal aren't real, but it's good clickbait, just like the Brie Larson stuff. On some other level, it's driven by a hatred of left-wing people and left-wing politics. And they obviously have problems with their views towards women because women seem to get the brunt of the criticism and the harassment from these guys. But it's probably a bit of both. As you see with the anti-SJW YouTubers in general, they like to create narratives. They like to create these figures that are popular to hate on and get them a lot of clicks. But it's pretty boring what they talk about. It's mostly clips and 
quotes taken entirely out of context to paint them as something they're not or paint them as way more radical than they really are just to get these people riled up about the fictional SJWs that take over everything. And again, these guys don't understand politics. They don't understand storytelling or filmmaking because if Star Wars has suddenly gone woke to you, you didn't understand Star Wars in the first place. This new era of Star Wars likes to both side stuff a lot. I'd say it's going back on the message. In the, you know, the Mandalorian, it likes to both sides the Empire a bit. In the sequel trilogy, it likes to both sides the First Order, people like Kylo Ren and the Resistance. You have that character DJ saying he doesn't care who he's selling to, he just wants to make money, makes them look both as bad as each other. Whereas in the original trilogy, it was like, here are the rebels inspired by the Viet Cong fighting the Empire, which are inspired by the US. And clearly, the Viet Cong are the good guys. So casting minority actors and having women as female leads to you might be political because that's your political understanding. But the themes of the sequel trilogy are far less political than anything you find in stuff George Lucas was involved in. Yet you love and revere George Lucas and you love his acolytes like Dave Filoni, who worked very closely with George Lucas, but you hate people like Kathleen Kennedy. And I would be more happy if Kathleen Kennedy was following George Lucas' example and including more anti-establishment, anti-authoritarian politics in these movies. But again, she's not the director of these films. She's a producer. She's you know a top person at Lucasfilm. The problem with the films is on J.J. Abrams. So to end the video, the one thing I will say is that Dave Filoni and John Favreau do understand what makes Star Wars good. I will say that. And I will say J.J. Abrams and Ryan Johnson don't. I don't think they're necessarily awful filmmakers. But the reason people love Star Wars is the interconnectivity, characters popping up in different things, the canon, the history being very consistent, and the potential for all these characters you love through across the mediums, books, films, TV shows, to show up in other things. You know, when they brought Thrawn back in Star Wars Rebels, that was really cool. When they had, you know, Billy D. Williams do Lando's voice in Rebels as well. Have Darth Maul show up in the Clone Wars and then have Ahsoka in the Clone Wars and then have her in the Mandalorian. That is stuff people like. It's world building. And Dave Filoni and to a lesser extent John Favreau are very good at this. But that's the problems of the film. Not that they have been ruined by left-wing politics. Like I said, I believe most people involved in Mandalorian are left-leaning. You have people who've directed Mr. Robot. You have Taika Waititi, who's very left-wing. You have all these different people working on the Mandalorian. But somehow, something like the sequel trilogy, which is bad and isn't very political, is the political one. Where the Mandalorian which I'd say is more political, isn't the political one. And Clone Wars isn't political. And the original trilogy isn't political. And the prequels aren't political, despite the George Lucas stuff being way more political. So it's just generally a combination of these nerds being so dumb, they don't understand politics, they don't understand political themes in media, also them being grifters because this makes a lot of money, it's popular to hate on these people, and just being a bit unhinged in all these theories about these different characters involved in making Disney Star Wars and how much influence they really have, how much influence their own political views have and everything like that. And underlying it all is an extreme backlash online to diversity and left-wing politics. Of course, the online Star Wars community is very adjacent to the anti-SJW YouTubers like The Quartering. Geeks and Gamers, of course, is a Star Wars YouTuber, but he transitioned to be more like The Quartering as well. And I have videos on the toxic politics of the gaming community and the toxic politics of anti-SJW YouTubers, so go check them out as well but I feel that really colours this discussion. This isn't just a Star Wars problem. This is a geek nerd fandom problem. But anyway, that is it for the video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Let me know about your experience with these Star Wars YouTubers. If you like my content, please like the video, maybe subscribe to the channel. Also check me out on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and Instagram. Check out my Patreon as well. Most of my stuff is demonetized. Hopefully this isn't, but it might be as well. And come join our communities on Discord and my subreddit. And if you made it this far, Thank you for watching.